trong này hàng làm việc ở như là nhà sĩ ở chúng ở đặc biệt um, That in Vietnamese means um, this weekend I am working in a school for special people, which I think is the literal translation of what I can do. But I just wanted to show you and tell you what my time is being spent doing here. Now, for those patrons of ours that know what I do, we've been talking about this, but I think this is the first time that um, I really wanted to kind of put something on camera for almost the first and the last time, because a lot of people have been asking, what do you do outside of boat building and, you know, drinking beer? But if you can tell from the surgical scrubs, I am working back as a dental surgeon. Again, I've put some posts on Facebook, but through a sheer series of coincidences, I find myself re-registered as a dentist to work in Vietnam and to volunteer in local outreach communities. And as a result of COVID, there are no foreign surgeons coming in here. And these people have nothing. They literally have nothing. So for the last couple of months, I have been volunteering when I'm not boat building um, or videoing the boat build to um, work, volunteer, around rural communities in Vietnam as a surgeon. This morning has been fairly full on. I have seen probably 40 patients. I've got 214 patients to see in this particular orphanage. And it is, it's not so much an orphanage, it's not for children. Most of these are, sh it's a shelter for underprivileged adults. So most of the patients I've seen today, they're all men in this shelter. They are between about 20 and 70. No access to dental care in Vietnam. So I am just doing whatever's necessary. I've got a really, really amazing team of nurses, technicians to help me. And a lot of it is just brutal, brutal work. It's a lot of, it's multiple extractions. Uh, very, very high incidence of like problems with their teeth. And it's just a, a treadmill. So I am, filthy, sweaty, covered in powder, blood, God knows what else. And um, honestly, this kind of makes it all worthwhile. Like the whole ability to go in and actually give back to these communities makes my time in Vietnam, yeah, pretty special. Again, for those of you who are our patrons and know about this, I've recently, um, acquired or I work permit to work here as a surgeon so I will be back here for the next two years working or volunteering to just help these people or help the rural communities in Vietnam again we talk a lot about this but there is a lot of agent orange that still causes problems in the ground and causes huge amounts of birth defects so I've seen children's orphanages I've seen these shelters and I will continue to work but the disabilities here are brutal savage and there is no help it is very very emotionally draining as well as physically draining um so yeah so that that is what i'm doing this is this is life in vietnam for me for the next at least five years i have i came here and decided no 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 i, I have to do something to give back to to this community to these communities so yeah working as a surgeon i'll put some stills up i obviously don't take photos and videos of myself for obvious reasons one i'm busy but two to protect the privacy of the people who are my patients and under my care so i'll put some photographs up of what i am doing here in vietnam but i hope this explains to you kind of number one why i want to give back to this community i have a set of hands and an ability to work and to work for free and i think because of that um it would be stupid of me to not try to help um, people that desperately need it. So thank you to my team. Thank you to everyone that's helping me kind of do all this work. And I will see you all with obviously more boat building, but just wanted to kind of fill you in on, pardon the pun there, you see, filling dentist, um, fill you in on what I do here um, when I'm not drinking beer and building boats. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm gonna actually put a link to Patreon up there because you know this is what supports my ability to work as a surgeon. The fact that I can volunteer and not demand any sort of payment is because you keep us going. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. We will be back with more 
boat building very, very soon, and life in Vietnam. But this is just a, a much a little bit. Much at Cuc Sung or Vietnam, a little bit of life in Vietnam. Have a safe day, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye. Okay, Mike, so let's talk about the front opening windows. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we experienced these on the 1260 last year um, when we were sailing in Australia. They are the best. I just yeah. cannot describe how much I love them. So we'll have pretty much the same thing. Yeah, very much so. And when we write our design briefs of what a sea wind should be, the front opening windows is one of those sort of dual helm, dual helm, front because opening window. Very all this unique. Sort of... I can't think of any other catamarans that have them. guys that are coming through doing it now, okay. but at the 1160, you know, it took in 2004 when that came through with yeah. front opening windows, trifold door, really quite innovative in its day, but it still now does the job. And it's absolutely what we brought over into this model because yeah. You're just the airflow you get so, you know, when you're on anchor just coming through it makes sense so yeah we're going as large as we can front opening windows so this entire area will be exactly window. yeah exactly so you know the limitations are we've got to sit behind the jib track yeah but we're coming up and and uh, sitting on here now on this boat we've got a nice brow here as well so you've got a bit of extra shading coming from direct down so yeah that is good but yeah as wide as we can as yep. i said for us we need the vision from the helm position as well coming through here so yep. we bring it right up to the edge yep yeah and part of like this structure that's not actually a window like here is that going yep. to be glass so we're looking at the back face of the inside liner okay the external face is actually a molding that was just down on the ground oh, there yeah. so so this is actually quite a it's fairly light yeah but it's got the gel coat surface on the inside I to give see. us a nice finished inside yeah you can see there's a recess here for where we'll have a fixed glass window going in here yeah and then we'll have a gloss finished on the outside okay yeah great yeah. so mike what we got here so this is our, our helm position window it's just a viewing window it's a fixed toughened glass window yeah and really it's just about for the helm if you're in bad weather or or just out of the sun or just you know you're standing in the inner position you've just got the ability to, to look up at your your main telltales and you can just see that when you're looking up actually you can just see the top of your jib telltales as well just just for sail trim and uh, just checking in where you're at you know yeah. even when you you know you're raising your helm you can see up i mean typically you're, you're sort of leaning over yeah so when you're raising your your you main mean, yeah. halyard you're leaning over this side and you can see but but yeah just just general sail control yeah. yeah and one thing i found when we chartered the 1260s last year is that the difference to sailing a monohull for example is that you because of this massive coach roof you do have that disconnect between yourself and yeah. the actual sails so that was something that it just took me a bit of getting get used, used to it. exactly yeah. right yeah so you have to have and, that you, and you haven't got that same sort of feel of a monohull where you know where you when you're in the power zone and not exactly. you quite easily accidentally come out of it and not quite notice so quickly so yeah, yeah. So and it's good to check in with that yeah you yeah. have to have that okay yeah. sweet all right, Mike, so we've got the winches installed. This is hull one. Yes, so hull one's customer's gone for the Harkin upgrade. So the base boat is a Lumar package. The Harkins come in a two-speed electric winch, whereas the Lumar are a single speed. They'll run fast under low load. Yeah. And then when they get higher load, then then, then they'll slow down. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, when you're raising your main, it'll go up pretty quick, and then that final part, it will slow down. Yeah. Whereas the Harkins have got a very much dedicated slow speed fast speed yeah and some people prefer that yeah. it's, you know and some people over the years have always said you know i prefer harken or i prefer luma whatever it is so so we have an option to upgrade to harken which boat one has and it's a full boat option yeah okay yeah all right mike what do we got here both engine bays we're getting those fitted out now and we can see we've got black water tanks in these are a plastic welded uh tank coming out of the uk the engines have been in for some time so i'm sure you guys have seen that already but when you're on this side, you can see we've got the AGM battery box. So, I mean, most people are going for lithium batteries, which we're seeing, which is great, but you still need an AGM for your starts. Yeah. And we have those down in the engine bay here. So two engine bay start batteries, independent, but can be parallel. Then we've got all the sort of the standard Yanmar gear. So we've got the Yanmar fuel filters and they've got a sort of a digital control because the the motors these days with the ECU, the electronic control unit, are actually connecting into the, the fuel filters because like, being those common rail diesels, they, they need to have that cleaner fuel. We've got the exhaust muffler down here, all of the water cooling system and uh, filters are in. And then we've got our basic blue red freshwater plumbing, hot cold plumbing going in as well. Testing, testing, one, two, three. 
Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode. No, I've had the song in my head for like two days. I don't know, I heard it somewhere. I can't get rid of it. Sorry about the uh, alarm in the background, guys. <laughs> Hello patrons, uh, yes I'm back in Vietnam, I don't know if you... <laughs> hey everyone, I hope you guys, I won't say hey everyone, I hope you guys found that episode really interesting. Big thank you to Mike for taking some time out of his day to take us through the factory and give us some updates. Stay, stay tuned for further Ruby Rose 2 build updates. In the meantime, oh, sorry, I've completely lost it, let's do it again. Give us a thumbs up and we... King hell, it's been a while since I've done this, sorry. We will be back next week with a brand new episode. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next week.